Hello. Good morning. How are you today? This glorious Sunday of September, ready for the autumn, for the fall, for the change of season soon. And what is happening today here? Well, in our Sunday healing meditation, today I have the pleasure to present my own research about Frida Kahlo and her own spirituality and religiosity. So is this week I have been doing some research about the spirituality of Frida Kahlo and Mexican religiosity. It's too much information that at the end I could be one year or more researching and still so discovering many beautiful and interesting things. However, I managed to choose a few of her pictures. She painted more than 200 pictures in her life. We are going to know her in a different way because I, as you know, there are so many documentaries about her. There are the films and everybody knows basically about Frida Kahlo, but our perspective today, because this is about spirituality, and this is about healing, this is about meditation, and to learn to be, to feel better, and to be more happy. So this is why we are focusing in the spirituality, and of course in the cultural religiosity of Mexico. Right. As always, we are going to start with our own healing meditation, purification, to be ready today for this spiritual journey with Frida Kahlo. So first we need, yes, just to settle down, to be in touch with our soul, to be ready to absorb the information that is useful for us or for you individually, right? <laughs> Remember, whatever I said, you do it in your own rhythm, okay? Right, let's go to a start. First, I am going to share the power presentation in Zoom. For the ones, hello, Sasha, hello, Enslo, I don't see anybody else. But if you have time to join me in Zoom, and in Zoom you can see all the presentations with the pictures of Frida Kahlo. But after you. Okay, so I am going to share the screen. Sorry, <laughs> this thing is our technology. I think I am improving a little bit every day with the light. <laughs> Uh, the sound. Um, okay. Oops. Okay. Get in there slowly. Sorry. Um, hello, the girls in Zoom. Hello, Helen. Oh, and now it goes so quick. No, we are still there. <clears throat> okay. We are ready. Right, the first thing I am going to do is to light a candle and guess, and guess, is a Frida Kahlo candle. Um, and it was so beautiful that, of course, I had to buy it. Okay, it's ready for you, for me, for everybody, for Mother Earth, and to bless the spirit of Frida Kahlo today. I leave it here. Carefully. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay, beautiful angels. We are ready for this spiritual journey today. So we are going to start now the healing meditation. Please sit down comfortable. Back straight. Feet in the ground in touch with Mother Earth, close your eyes, 
and we are going to breathe in and breathe out three times deeply and we are going to open the mouth to release all the tensions all the conflicts accumulated in our body in our mind in our heart and we let it go ready let's go we feel better now second time we feel more relaxed now and last time Wow, it's a big difference how we are now, how we feel now. <clears throat> we are freer, our body is more relaxed, our mind is more settled. And now we are going to connect with our soul. Please put your hands in your, in, in your heart. And breathe in again three times. And now what we are going to do is just to connect with our energy, with our heart, with our spiritual being. Because remember, we are spiritual beings in this body that we are in this time life of, with our, these parameters of space and time. Sometimes it's difficult to connect. Sometimes we forget. Yes, sometimes we forget about us. Yes, exactly. We wake up, we get up, we have breakfast, uh, we go to work, or we do things in the computer. But what happened with us, our soul? So now, if this is your time. Okay, it's just time to feed your soul. So being this beautiful <clears throat> energy that is you, is where you have the connection with the universe and with Mother Earth. And we recognize our presence. We recognize that we are worthy, that we are special, we are important, we are unique. And from here, we are in a high vibration. From here, we can manifest. If you want to, otherwise, just be grateful what you are, what you have, because the universe loves when we are grateful. And the universe give us back more when we are grateful rather than we are with a very sour heart and energy and feeling like that. Oh, are you angry with the world? Blah, blah, blah. So the universe gave us more of that. So we don't want that. <clears throat> so in the high energy, we are in the right place, being grateful to be alive, being grateful, to have the force of life, and being grateful for this beautiful day, Sunday, that you can choose to do whatever you want, but after this spiritual session. Now, please put your hands 
on your knees. And by now, your hands are full of energy. They are warm. They are healing. So we are going to heal now our legs, knees, feet, toes, and why this specific area of the body? Because our legs make us to go to the future, to move forward. So we need to get rid of all the fears to trust that we are going to have the best for our highest best in the future. And when I say in the future, it's now as well, this afternoon, tomorrow, this week, be ready for what you have this week. <sighs> Amazing energy. Wow, and you are doing so well. I think it's the energy of everybody now. And Lou Linton, we are in the same vibration now. Okay. Right. So we are ready now. We purify ourselves. We are in the right vibration. We are feeling our soul. And we are ready now to learn about Frida Kahlo and her spirituality. Was she spiritual? Was she religious? We are going to find out. Let's go. So, <clears throat> Frida Kahlo, she said, you know, the first thing we have to learn about Frida Kahlo is that she was very funny. She was full of life. And the first thing we are going to learn about her today is like she said that I was born with the Mexican Revolution. She said that she was born in 1910 when there was the Mexican Revolution with Zapata and Pancho Villa and there was, she was the daughter of the revolution and it was hot and, and the volcanoes were erupting because <laughs> she is a daughter of the god fire, right? This is what she said, she described herself. But in the reality, she was born in 1907, three years before 1910. But anyway, we forgive her because it's true that she is a daughter of the Aztec god of fire. As we, we saw her pictures, that she was very fairy woman. And this is what we are going to learn now. She was contradictory, polemical, unexpected, nonconformist. And now she was feminine and feminist. Feminine because she always wanted to be beautiful for her Diego Rivera. So she was always wearing this beautiful Mexican indigenous clothes, her hair perfect, her flowers, and, the, and she all, and also she mended her the clothes to be uh, beautiful on her because fashion for her, it was another way of communication. We know that she was a feminist too. Uh, she was a teenager in the 20s. So she was in the flapper times. So I can see that she was a flapper because she was free. She was wild and she was wearing red lipstick. And who was wearing red lipsticks in these times? Suffragettes. The suffragettes was, were wearing in New York red lipstick as a sign of protest because before only, you know, uh, prostitutes, they were wearing actresses, so now it was a new mark for feminism, suffragettes, and Frida Kahlo was wearing very proud red lipstick. And she was nationalist, 
Mexico for her, for her and Diego Rivera. Rivera. It was like they love Mexico. They, they, there was a revival of the Mexican roots because until now, always they have the eyes what was what happening in Europe, what was happening in Spain and France and in the UK to, to do it, but no. In these twenties, thirties, that they were very special decades, they said, "No, we have enough. We have enough culture. We have enough talent, Mexicans, and the history of Mexico is amazing." So there was a revival of all Mexican. She was a communist, you know. In these times as well, twenties and thirties, they were very political, and this is what the outbreak would happen in the Second World War. So normally it was all the time political debates about left, right. So she was communist and anarchist, and we will talk a bit about this a bit later. She was bisexual and monogamous because monogamous because what she just wanted is to have a relationship with her Diego Rivera and that's it, no everybody else. But with Diego Rivera, it was not possible. And she was bisexual and she never hid it, never. And we are talking about the 20s, 30s again. I said that she was a flapper. And she was a queen of selfies. Maybe she was the first queen of selfies. See, she was living now. Imagine what she has been, she will do with the technology. She was free and trapped. Free because she was a free spirit and trapped because, you know, physically, most of the times, most of her life, she was no free. She was in bed for many years. She was in a wheelchair, but she has the will, you know, to work. She has the will to 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 manage to do exercise and to work again. Uh, she was anti-religious. <clears throat> okay, I need some water here, <laughs> but. She was anti-religious, and we need to explain this because, but she was culturally religious. We are going to explain that because her mother, she was, um, uh, she was the daughter of an indigenous Mexican man and a colonial Spanish woman. So she was very religious, Imagine that she was an Edwardian woman in the UK. Edwardian, conservative, you have to follow the rules, you have to follow the norms. So Frida, she was doing all the time what she wanted. Okay, so always she has uh, arguments with her mother. So she did the first communion, but after the first communion, she said, I don't want more religion. However, she was living in a country that is very religious. Her house were full of Catholic paraphernalia, the Virgen of Guadalupe, for example. And her father was um, a photographer coming from Germany, but who Hungarian roots. And he was more like a philosopher. So um, Frida, she was very intelligent and she was reading uh, philosophy books even when she was a teenager following her dad. So there was this um, um, awakening, we can say, or her, that she said, I don't want to follow these stupid religious norms of society. So she was free, basically. But we are going to see that culturally religious, she was so much influence with all the Mexican religions. We are going to see that today. But I am going to continue how, how we see. She was a bourgeois. She was like middle class. But also she has this indigenous roots coming from the mother side. Of course, unfortunately, she was disabled, but dynamic. 
very much. She has lots of energy. She was very funny and charismatic. Everybody wanted to be with her. Everybody want her in a party, in a dinner, and Diego Rivera as well. Both of them, they were the king and queen of the party. So everybody wanted to be with them. Even all Andre Breton, Picasso, you know, all of them, they wanted to be with her. And even Andre Breton called her the ribbon which wraps a bomb. Et voila. She was volcanic and mothering, volcanic, you know, we know that she's very telluric, very with so much fire energy, but she has this kind of mothering. She was, uh, even at the end of the day, she, she just um, gave back with Diego Rivera and she said, well, I love you because you are my son, my husband, my father, everything. What can I do you know, if you are unfaithful all the time? And she was mothering, as we will see, um, her, her niece, her nephew, animals. Anyway, I leave it like that. She was a very ambiguous because she wanted to be shocking when she wanted and sarcastic. And also she was very cultivated because as I said, in her house, there was this amazing library with all philosophers, German philosophers. She, she spoke German and also um, she has all the books of Freud. And we have, when well, we are talking again, we are in the 2030s. So in this photo, as we can see, like uh, the rebellious that she was coming, joining all the communist anarchist demonstrations with Diego Rivera. And then we have this picture that I use this picture for the promotion of this uh, spiritual section today. This picture that she is, um, she is like um, Bertie Mary with a sacred heart here with the aura here, with the rosary on her hands, and it's like some freedom. And this is a phenomenon that is having happening since the 90s in the UK. I remember in Brighton, there was a Frida Kahlo movement at the universities, um, and there were theater, and there was everything. And in the last two or three years, it started again. So, and why San Frida? Because, because it's um, an image that is why we are attracted to her, because she's very vulnerable and she's showing us all the time her faces of life, her suffering, in a way, in a very brave, courageous way, because she didn't hide anything. She was contradictory, but she didn't hide. If I, I have pain, I have pain. If I am angry, I am angry. And so what? Oh, sorry, microphone. Yes, so she was like that. So she make us have this halo of energy, but this is what we are going to learn for us to be better, to feel better, and to heal ourselves. Because what she was doing, her art, it was a way to escape from the pain, physical pain. Okay, but I will go more in detail. Um, <clears throat> and at the beginning, I mentioned that this Mexican revival of identity, culture, roots, history, that Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo, they were in this kind of intellectual movement. Yes, refusing what in European influences, European fashion, and come back to our history and to find what is our truth as Mexicans. So Diego Rivera have a, an amazing collection of pre-Hispanic artifacts. So Frida Kahlo loved all the fertility uh, totems, and and she used to. Uh, painted as well, included in some of her pictures. So <clears throat> Diego Rivera taught her many things. Diego Rivera inspired her in many, many ways. And both of them, I can say, they have Mexico in the skin. 
The first influence that we are going to see about the cultural religion of Mexico in the paintings is going to be the Mexican votive paintings. Okay, I am going to explain. The Mexican votive paintings is a tradition that it came in the churches, in the churches in Mexico, when someone wanted to ask Jesus, Virgin Mary, God for a favor because uh, a relative was ill, because there was an accident, because a child was very ill, so they need a miracle. So they went to a person, uh, you know, a simple person that who were doing paintings, nothing sophisticated. They pay to make a picture, a small picture. Normally, it was in a tin, and and this. This person, this artist, artisan, they were painting what, whatever it was the miracle. For example, that a baby was healed. So they will paint a grave with a baby and a Virgin Mary or Jesus or whoever you were asking for that miracle. And then you put like a text and you say, uh, please, uh, Virgin Mary, Virgin of Guadalupe, heal my baby. Or also they were doing that for just being grateful because the miracle happened, that relative, it was healed, or that situation, it was resolved. So they went to this person, they order a painting with a text, and then when you have the painting, you go straight away to the church and you give it there with a donation to the church, to the Virgin Mary or whoever, and you leave it in the church. So we, we found, we can find in many churches in Mexico, um, and even now they are in museums, uh, so many of these votive paintings. So when <clears throat> Diego Rivera took Frida, Ki Frida Kahlo to, to the USA, and Frida Kahlo had uh, the first abortion miscarriage, and, and she was suffering, she was so much in pain, she wanted to give a little baby to Diego Rivera. And then Diego Rivera, to, to release her for the pain, he said to her, why you don't paint like in the Mexican votive paintings? So this is what um, Frida Kahlo was doing for a while. She was um, reflecting her sufferings in this kind of votive painting. So we have this one that she, she's laying down in a hospital bed in Henry Ford Hospital, she's naked, and then she, she has red threads coming with a snail, with a fetus, with a, a pelvis. Remember that in the unfortunate accident that, was, that happened to her when she was 18, 19, she broke her pelvis. Um, you know, you remember, I suppose, okay? You remember her, her she was a broke, broken doll, like 32 bones or something, okay? But as I said, there are so many documentaries that they can explain all of that. But <clears throat> today we are focusing in the spirituality and cultural religion. So with this inspiration of Diego Rivera that said to her, create or paint votive paintings, and she, she wanted to heal Frida Kahlo her accident, or maybe she didn't do it consciously, but she make another votive painting from that accident it happens to get to her in the bus. And, and the text is, is like, no, like she is, she's ordering the painting. It's like her parents ordered that painting to say thank you that the little girl Frida survived the accident. An, ex, an ex examples of these votive paintings, they are these ones that I have now on the screen. They are not from Frida Kahlo, but it's just to give you an example what was these real votive paintings in the church. Like this one, like these two women, they were attracted, they were in assaulted, a man with a gun, they wanted to 
I suppose, to rob them. But then they were safe. They were safe for any reasons because one of them, she was praying to the Virgin, one of the Virgins of Mexico. So they were grateful. So they created this votive painting and it's one of the churches. And also there are some funny ones. You know, Mexicans, they have very sarcastic humor, like Frida Kahlo had. So this one is about two women that they are very grateful because they were one Sunday, they were going to the church and then a UFO was coming with two aliens and they were, <laughs> and they were so scared that they will be, they, they will be, they will have been adopted. So it didn't happen. They only, these aliens took the chickens of the village. <laughs> That's it. And, and they were safe. So they, they ordered this painting. Right. So we mentioned the Mexican votive patients, and now we are going to mention the cultural religiosity of Mexico. I said as well in the beginning, Frida Kahlo was surrounded by the old Catholic paraphernalia, even as she went to churches, cathedrals, and in all the house, houses, um, even now, there are always, you find the Virgin of the Guadalupe, or St. Judas, or, you know, so many saints, San Antonio. <laughs> so, um, and some of the paintings, when she is sewing her pain and her broken uh, body, uh, like the one for the ones you are with me in Facebook, like the one she has this corset, white corset, and she is half naked, and she has like the colon broken here. This is like in for you know, I was brought up in a Catholic country, so I was brought up as well with this paraphernalia imagine, imagining, so it comes normal and common, so to see all these figures like Jesus or in this one, San Sebastian a martyr, a martyr who was, uh, he died because he was all this torture, so you get used to, so this is what Frida consciously, unconsciously she's sewing herself, she's painting herself like a martyr. <clears throat> and in one of the pictures she painted with herself, this is in the, in, in an, I think it was probably in the 40s after, in a very, when she was more, her painting was more sophisticated, she was more adult. Um, she painted with the two monkeys, no, sorry, uh, she painted with one black monkey and one black cat. And then she has like a necklace, like a, like a spike, a spike like Jesus, a spike crown. And then a hummingbird, a dyed hummingbird is, is hanging from this spike. Okay, what is she telling us, you know, that she is suffering that she is that she is like in torture and see this she painted herself not like eke homo like jesus but like a eke eke femina and the hummingbird there that is dead you know the hummingbird is love it's a little bird that it means love and and so is so in us that in this moment of her life that is when Diego Rivera asked her for the divorce. She's really suffering physically and emotionally. And in these pictures, I show you a little bit of the Catholic uh, imaginary that we found in Mexico or in Spain or whatever, just to give you an idea what is it coming from. So, what can we say? She refused to be in the religion, but culturally it's in her because she's in all, in all around her. And not only the Catholic, all, also the Aztecs, the Mayans, the Mistecas, all the pre Hispanic. Right, and, and now I found this quote, 
is don't build a wall around your own suffering or it may devour you from the inside. Frida Kahlo. So this was her way to break up the wall of her suffering, her paintings. And in another side, we find that Frida loves life. She loves life and nature. And because she couldn't have babies, she was surrounded by animals. And if, if you saw the film or the documentary, as you can see in, the, in La Casa Azul, in the Blue House in Mexico City, where she was living, because there was this amazing gardens. And she has cat, monkeys, deer, dogs, pigeons, um, peacocks. And, and they have a few, Diego Rivera and her also, they have a few Mexican dogs. And this, I was talking about this two weeks ago when I was talking about the goddess and dogs, talking about different goddess of different cultures and the relationship with dogs. Right, so in Mexico, before the Spanish came with the big European dogs, Mexico, they have as well their own dogs and there is this black dog um, that it is doesn't have hair it's very small and and I, I always have problems to pronounce it in Mexican it's quingly and so and and one of these dogs Diego and Frida they put they name one of these dogs with the name of Cholol. And Cholok is the dog god, an Aztec dog god, Aztec. Do you remember? God, dog, the spelling is in the reverse, but it has the same letters. Ah, huh? funny. So this dog god protects, protects the underworld and represents the Lord of the underworld who guides the dead on the journey to, to Miklan. Miklan, it was another kind of heaven for the Aztecs. So you see how it's all the time there, the connection with the Mexican roots and now that with the Mexican, um, nature with the Mexican landscape and the and in one of the pictures Frida Frida she painted herself like a big deer and the deer with different arrows in her body and the blood so this is a for me is a bit shamanic you know it's like when the hunters they go to hunt a poor deer in the forest and then they use the arrows to kill you know it's no, you, you don't need just one hour, you need another and another and another. And as well means all the operations that she has, all the surgery. So in this painting, she transformed herself in a, in a wounded deer, in a beautiful forest with the water at the end. And this other picture, that is, I love this one. She is just on the Mexican ground and the roots of the vegetables, so the plants, they are growing out from her body. And she is connected with the roots in Mother Earth. So Frida Kahlo is sowing in this one. That she's okay, she is grounded and she's grounded on Mother Earth as we do many times here in these meditations that always I repeat is good to be in connection with the divine but also it's important to connect and to be grounded with Mother Earth. And always we find the duality in Frida Kahlo but the duality we found it all the time in the Aztec, Mayan, Cosmovisions and, and religions, right? Always the, the sun and the moon, the day and the light, the happiness and the sadness to be alive, to be dead. Um, so in so many pictures, we are going to find the sun 
and the moon represented as her vision of the universe. And everybody is connected to everything else and one. Anguish and pain, pleasure and death are but a process in order to exist. Um, this is a quote from one of her biographers, the American one, Hayden Herrera. And then we have been mentioning Diego Rivera, <clears throat> but now I am going to mention the importance of Diego Rivera on her life. Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo, they met when um, Frida, she was, well, they met before, but you know, it's part of the anecdote. But when she, uh, well, Frida Kahlo, she married him when she was 22. And, and probably Diego, she was, he was 42 or 43, something like that. So it was a big difference with age. It was a different, different, a different size as well. She was small, he was big, big, he was enormous. And, and the mother of Frida, that she didn't agree much that her daughter married a communist artist, Bohemian. And the mother of Frida called him the elephant and the dove. I suppose you know about that, but um, also Diego, he was, he was seeing himself like a toad. Right. So now it's time to talk about them. And before anything else, Diego Rivera with 42, he was a man when Frida was still um, with 22, a flapper teenager, uh, just recovering from this awful accident. And Frida always admired him. And she was like, as well, like curious about all you know, this artist. And so what happened, the connection was there. The love was there. And Diego Rivera inspired her all her life. Diego Rivera told her to use the Mexican votive paintings to start painting as for her healing. Diego Rivera, told her that she was a good painter. Diego Rivera loved everything and everything, everybody who were Mexican. So Frida Kahlo dressed up as a Mexican indigenous, a, Mex a Mexican indigenous, remember her mother? She was from Oaxaca, south of Mexico, and she has all these indigenous influences. So. Frida Kahlo, she has a big reference to dress up because in Oaxaca, still now is an area that you find different languages, different ethnic groups, different traditions, and different uh, indigenous clothes. So uh, Frida Kahlo, she embraced this Mexicanity in her dress, in her necklaces, in her jewelry, that this jewelry, it was Diego Rivera who was giving her. And then she was getting more sophisticated with her, with her, with her hair. I tried today, but I don't know so much. <laughs> and, and we know that um, they love each other, but Diego Rivera, uh, she was unfaithful. And, and Frida Kahlo, she has to deal with that. And we have this love that sometimes becomes more like an obsession. She painted that, she described it. He was her God. And you can see in this picture how Frida Kahlo, she painted Diego Rivera in her third eye. What is telling us? She's closing herself, that I just for her God, Diego Rivera. But Diego Rivera, um, she, he was like her. He was volcanic, he was charismatic, he was sarcastic, he was the king of the parties. Uh, so both of them, they have this 
telluric volcanic um, personalities that as well sometimes they were like opposite energies. So if Frida Kahlo, she painted not only once with Diego Rivera in her forehead, in her third eye, a few times. So, but at the end of the day, um, what can I say? I continue. <laughs> So um, this picture is not very well known, and it's just um, the double self-portrait of Diego and Frida. Frida made it half of the face of Frida, half face of Diego. And here we can see that, we, that Frida is connected with the moon, and Diego is connected with the sun, and both and in a heart. And then there is like a big um, um, a snail, see a snail? That is the creation. So it's like the creation of the universe with the big astros, the moon and the sun, and they, they are there, part of the creation of the universe. And this is how Frida shows her love for Diego. And this is what we have been saying about also the Aztec mythology. And this is in many paintings, we have this duality in Frida Kahlo. And like in this picture, we find the duality. This picture is when she went to, to the USA with, with Diego. And in the right side of the picture, we find the, the American capitalist industry, the machines, you know, we are in the 20s, 30s, we start in the beginning of the industrialization, more or less. So it was about electricity and, you know, and the smoke and big buildings, I mean, sky driving. And then on the left, Frida represented herself with her Mexican side, Mexican side full of beautiful clothes, sun, um, pre-Hispanic status, totems, the fertility goddess, and a skull. You know, Mexicans, they live this duality every day, present the connection between life and death is there every day. And this um, big pyramid, and stones and of course the moon and the sun but the moon and the sun again here they are in the site of mexico they are not in the usa in the usa she just represent the um the usa flag but the sun and the moon they are in the mexican side this portrait is called um a self-portrait in the frontier between mexico and the usa and this another one is about as well when she was not happy at all in the USA she wanted to come back and this is how she felt so she painted her her Mexican indigenous Oaxacan, Oaxacan dress there but without her and it's surrounded by buildings toilets a trophy all the American landscape what it was for her and just her Mexican dress what does it mean that her soul, it was not there anymore. She wanted to come back to her Me Mexico. I have to say that I have been using the paintings, whatever I was saying about different points of the spirituality of Frida Kahlo, but I, don't, I didn't put the paintings chronologically. So now we are going to, <coughs> to talk about a different aspect about little rituals that she did to help herself, to heal herself. And it has to be with the fashion, of course, with the painting, even with politics. And it was a kind of therapy. And again, I have to say, I don't know if Frida Kahlo do it consciously or unconsciously, or maybe because Diego Rivera was telling her to do it. Like, this dress that Frida Kahlo, she is wearing the Tejuana 
dress that the, the Juana dress is like a big veil, like it was like a bride, but only you have the face. So it's like a white lace embroidery. So for me, when I saw these pictures, like she wants to be like a Virgin Mary, but, but not with, with baby Jesus. What happens? He has in the third eye, Diego Rivera, of course. And then she was very communist, um, anarchist. Remember as well, she have an affair with Trotsky. And, and then at the end of her years, that her relationship with Diego Rivera, they were married again, but they were more settled. And Frida Kahlo was very ill. And she started to paint paintings like with with Marx, Karl Marx, Karl Marx with a hand taking an eagle. And, and this picture, it was called Marxism is going to give uh, the healing to, to people. And this is why like Marx with his big hands is, is giving healing to her. So I think Frida Kahlo in this state, probably 1953, she died 1954. She started to replace a bit uh, Diego Rivera for Marx and to put him there saying, I am going to be safe. You are going to, with Marxism, you, it's going to be easy that everybody has doctors. I don't know. But in, in the point that it was interesting for me is like, see, Marx is there like in the sky, like a powerful God again. And then we have this famous self-portrait we saw her when, when she discovered that uh, Diego Rivera was having an affair with her little sister, uh, Cristina. This was one as well, one of the most traumatic episodes in Frida's life. So what she did, she took off all her femininity. She took all her Mexican indigenous clothes. She put some masculine clothes, probably Diego Rivera should. She cut her hair. And we can see her again, like a change, just to, to start um, being with herself again, because the emotional pain, it was too much that she needs to be recreated again. Because until now, she was, was just, um, for Diego Rivera, admiration and love. And then that wall started to crumble. She, and she was so hurt and wounded that she changed her image. And what is this? What is telling us that? We have done this in some way, all of us. Okay, but this is why we like Frida Kahlo because we see ourselves on her pain and her suffering. She was doing for her own healing, you know, she was a self absorbed woman, you know, but who blamed her? You know, she have a very hard life with her body. So, and in some way, us, we have done this. We cut our heart like an art of rebellion or an art to change your life, to make something, even your clothes. So it's, it's, this is like a little ritual. And then her famous painting, I don't know why it's her famous painting because well, all of them, they are so symbolic, um, so inspired. We have the two Fridas here. And again, she's sewing herself with the Mexican clothes as where she likes to be with Diego Rivera, and then another Frida with European clothes, probably when the ones uh, clothes she brought from Paris, 
and then the two hearts are linked with a red thread, a vein, and the European ones, he has the scissors to cut it. Again, Diego Rivera, as he asked for the divorce, and Diego Rivera didn't, apparently didn't like the Frida Kahlo she came from Paris. Probably, I don't know, I, I don't do speculation. So Frida Kahlo, she was like, um, who I am, what I am doing. So she represented herself as to Frida. Double personality, and we are talking about dua duality again. But at the end, this is, a sh this is showing us that she's trying to find her real truth. But all the time we see her sincerity on her paintings. Um, this is the last picture we are going to see and um, is a few years before she died, she was getting ready to death. She was, um, you know, so many, so many days in bed without moving. And remember, she was very intelligent and she's Mexican, she was living with the life and death here, this duality. Remember Dia de los Muertos in Mexico, they celebrate death with the skulls, skeletons, food, uh, firecrackers, um, lights. So she, has, she was getting ready, even though we know she loves life, okay? But her body was getting worse and worse. So she represented herself again in her bed, sleeping, and with vegetable, Mother Earth with her all the time, the roots as well. And in the canopy of the bed, you remember, she has a canopy bed with a mirror here. So in the canopy is a skeleton full of flowers and fireworks. So this is just to say that she died in 1954. And um, it was her way to, to show her relationship with death. Right. Okay, I finished now with the paintings and now we are going to say why Frida became an icon, why we found her everywhere now in handbags, in, I don't know, candles, jewelry, uh, clothes, textiles, dresses, everything. Because she has been influencing artists, artisans, fashion designers, now uh, deco designers, the people without the decoration, all the houses, there are cushions, um, curtains, everything uh, for me it's like um, a few years ago maybe it was the Che Guevara icon yes do you recognize it it was the Che Guevara or the Marilyn Monroe but now it's the Frida we found it everywhere and why why what is the reason do you know uh, why it was Che Guevara or it was Marilyn Monroe <laughs> because the vulnerability and because they were brave enough when we are talking now about Frida and she was brave she was courageous to show and she didn't care her imperfections her addictions and and her pain and her suffering so it's something that all of us we related because we live in this planet and we are living in this life in this body but what we are trying now is to to, with all the tools we have now, call it self-help, call it spirituality, to embody all of this in us to, to create um, a better wolf and a better side of ourselves and for our higher selves. So um, Frida found beauty in truth and we see that on her paintings because even though she was controversial, she didn't hide. She didn't hide her feelings. 
and what can we learn from Frida today to transform trauma and pain by healing through creativity i i would like to to say to you try these mexican votive paintings maybe you want to to manifest something or maybe you want to to be grateful with something or to ask for something so just create your own um your own votive painting and instead to put the virgin mary put an angel or a fairy or the universe just try it doesn't matter and uh, it's just to use creativity for healing we don't try to be perfect uh, artists or painters okay another thing that we can learn from frida today is to have the right to feel pain or pleasure and being honest about it to put our boundaries if you know if i am angry i am angry so i cannot talk to you at the moment it's okay but i i I will talk to you later, you know, or I can be in the phone for 20 minutes listening to you, blah, 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 blah. Sorry, you know, it's okay to put your boundaries. This is what we have to learn about her. She was brave and honest. And of course, to create art for healing, art for healing. It's different, like Hodorowsky always said art for healing all the art i am doing is for healing <laughs> for healing himself for healing life for healing everybody and to love and embrace life you know frida Kahlo. one of her favorite sentences viva la vida hail life and in one of her last paintings okay in her last painting when she knew she was going to die still see painting these beautiful watermelons okay they are alive and the color is so mexican and beautiful and radiant and did she just say viva la vida live life hail life and i think I have finished my introduction i think it has been a long one but you know as i said I spent the whole week researching and I think if I have another year, I will research because everything is so interesting about her even in this decade, the 20s, 30s, it was amazing. And then, and then when she went to Paris and she met Picasso and Breton, you know, it's no ending, but I had to end it. Okay, I hope you like it, but just to remember you, there are two films about Frida. Uh, the one probably you know or you have been watching, if not, please I recommend it, is the film Frida with Salma Hayek, in, made in 2002. And then there is another less known film that it was made in the 80s in Mexico and it's called Frida Kahlo Naturaleza Muerta, Frida Kahlo Dead Nature. Um, it's, you don't need to understand Spanish to watch it because it's a kind of experimental film made between 70s, 80s in this wave. So um, I don't know, it's interesting to watch it but if you want to watch something lighter, even though we know the life of Frida Kahlo, it was no lighter at all, okay? And then watch the Salma Hayek, one that is brilliant. Right, so now we, we have been talking about her connection with nature. Yes, with the Mexican landscape, with the Mexican plants and vegetables and fruit, everything it has to do with the force of life in Mexico. And her relationship as well with the goddesses and the pre-Hispanic goddess and gods and goddesses we saw with Xolol, we saw with the sun and the moon, and now we are going to see with this goddess called Siwakol. Siwakol it was the the goddess of the underworld it was mother earth or it is mother earth sorry but she is the goddess of the underworld she's as well the goddess who takes women and who takes children or babies that they die in the during the birth she took them she's in charge of women 
suffering. This is why it's called as well the weeping goddess. Because she wails. There are so many legends that this goddess, you can hear it in some nice wailing. Even now there are some terror films about her, honestly. Honestly, it's called La Llorona in Spanish. There are these beautiful Mexican songs that I suppose you know called La Llorona. So she collects the souls of mothers and children. And she's a warrior goddess as well. Her face is painted in red and black. She's a snake goddess. But a snake in Mexican symbology is good. It means creation. It means it means the wisdom, like in the Greeks. It's a hummingbird goddess. Remember, we saw the hummingbird in some paintings of Frida Kahlo. And the relationship with her maybe was not conscious or unconscious, but she has been painting her in many ways, um, Frida, to see what called, because she was called. She protects women and she absorbs the suffering. She absorbs our suffering. Okay? Um, and this is very important that because we are going to do the guided visualization in a minute with this goddess, Siwa Koalt. So she is going to absorb your suffering and she is going to recycle. I remember she protects women, but not only, you know, women as we physically, as well, the feminine side of men, okay? Um, so, so this is why maybe Frida, she felt so identified identify with her, with Silva Koal and with the son of La Llorona, the weeping woman. Or the wailing woman and in Ireland in Irish folk we find the banshee what is similar in all the cultures and traditions we find a similar goddess of God we were talking about the Aztec gold cholok like they put the name on one of the dogs as well it was as well the dog of the underworld okay so with all of this information, I hope it was not too much, but you know, uh, I, I, I enjoy so much doing it and researching. And I promise you, there are more and more and more. <laughs> so I had to cut myself just to learn to say, no more research, that's it, it's enough. So I hope you enjoy it and I hope you learn it. And now we are going to finish with the guided visualization to connect if we come with the spirit of Frida Kahlo and one of the biographers, the Mexican biographer Marta Zamora, uh, is fascinating to listen to her interviews um, of her books about Frida Kahlo and she said that she could feel her when she was researching, she was writing about her, she was like one more in the family. Sorry, I had to drink. Right. <clears throat> so now we go to the guided visualization. So please sit down comfortable again, your feet in the ground, your shoulders and your back straight, or you can lay down if you prefer, close your eyes. And we are going to do the breathing in and breathing, breathing out three times to go deeply in ourselves and to feel ourselves to be ready for this spiritual journey to Mexico. Let's go. <sighs> And again, last time, and 
to guide my darling so we are going to visualize from our legs feet and toes like we saw in the pictures some roots are going to grow up because our body is like a tree and our legs are the roots that we are connected with mother earth so these roots they are going to go down 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 crossing all the floors where you are earth mud chalk water even crystals and then you will arrive to a cave in the middle in the center of mother earth in her uterus and there you are going to feel the unconditional love from mother earth you are her daughter you are her son she's showing you a corridor a long corridor that you start walking that are torches so that is light at the end of this corridor there is a big door medieval door made with wood and iron it's very healthy you open it it's heavy but you open it and you go to the other side and in the other side you are like in a canal you are in like in a boat in water in a canal in the old ancient city of mexico called technotic lamb this boat is going to take you to the middle of the city the center where there are the pyramids one for the sun one for the moon we go first to the moon temple that is in the left some brothers and sisters they are coming to take you to help you to go from the boat from the canal to the temple they recognize you it's not the first time you have been there And they tell you from stars and stars to go underground in the temple of the moon. So there is a room for you. It's a bit humid. It's a bit cold, but the temperature is right because outside we are in Mexico. It's hot, but there is cold, humid, a bit dark. And in the room, there is a green crystal, like jade, Mexican jade. And you can stop looking up this crystal. And suddenly, a vision appears from there. And I see what called the goddess. Mother Earth, the goddess, the, la the, the lady of the underworld, the goddess we saw before, the goddess who is going to take and absorb all our sufferings and traumas that we don't need them anymore, to transform them in just vague memories, just to remember them, not to make that, those mistakes again in the future. So her green light is going to illuminate, illuminate our body, our heart, our brain, our third eye. So now 
we are fluorescent green, all our body and even our aura. I leave you one minute, few seconds, because this is important. Because I said she is taking off all the suffering. from your cells, your mind, heart. We breathe in and breathe out again. In case there is still something that she needs to absorb, She is saying that the process is completed now, as it's gone, to clean and to help and to protect other women and men and children. Then our brothers and sisters, they are coming to pick us up and we are ready to go to the Sun Temple. The Sun Temple, we don't need to go underground. We are in the first floor. It's hot, it's warm. There is plenty of food there, like a banquet. There is music and drink. Even now you are different because you are wearing different clothes. I remember you are in Mexico, so remember? Probably you have flowers in your hair now. You have colorful clothes, plenty of ne necklaces, jewelry. And it's time to dance. And you are there enjoying yourself. And suddenly you are in the same table with Frida Kahlo. Probably she has something to say to you. She was here and she wanted to come to the meditation, but I think she, she came in the, in the table with the food and the music and the chili and the tequila. She has a message for you, a message for your future. Maybe it's a word, maybe it's a sentence, maybe it's a symbol, maybe it's an image, a landscape. Remember, she was, she, she was an artist, so she can show your mess her message for you in any way. But okay, it's good. Um, there is some healing down here. She is happy and she's screaming and singing. <laughs> yes, yes, we will use creativity, Frida, for healing, art for healing. And our clothes as well, because she's saying that our clothes tell, say things about ourselves, but sometimes we don't have the time, you know, to, to be, you know, <laughs> like specifically. And now the clothes, start, nowadays clothes, they are a bit boring, to be honest. She said, I see, I agree. Okay, thank you. Right. <laughs> Maybe we need to go uh, shopping to Mexico. Yes. So we are going to come back now, say goodbye 
to your brothers and sisters, to Frida, to the goddess Quatli Coed. We, we say goodbye to the temples, to the sun and the moon. We take the boat to come back to the canal where we can find our door to come back to reality. It was a beautiful space to be, but we are still in this planet and we have to live with this body that we have and to continue it today, today, and to do the best we can. So we are in the in the corridor now. We found our cave again where Mother Earth is very proud of us. She's looking at us like we release something big and we are free and ready to manage our life from love, freedom, and trust because we have faith in the energy of the universe and the goddess Kolikoe and the Mother Earth because they are protecting us and we are pure. And with this feeling, we come back to our roots. Remember your legs, your body, you are still grounded in Mother Earth. You feel your body, you feel your legs, your hands, your flesh, your face, your toes. And when I come free, you are going to remember everything. You are going to feel happy with energy, with a bit of fire of Frida Kahlo, with her love for life and creativity and to be ready for today. Three, two, one, open your eyes and touch your body. To be here in the room where you are, in the chair where you are sit down now and say your name, Sonia, and say your name to come back full time. I'm back 100 per 10, 100 time percentage because these journeys, they are very good, but we cannot be all the time there, you know? We need to do things in this world, in this third dimension that we live. Um, I haven't seen a sun bibliography, but as I mentioned before, I would like to make reference to the two biographies of Frida Kahlo, the most important ones, the Mexican Martha Zamora, that is a pleasure to listen to her interviews, and Hayden Herrera, she is a um, 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 North American academic. And, and just, I have to say goodbye soon, but please follow me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. This video is going to be in YouTube in half an hour, in one hour. If you want to watch it from the beginning or to watch it again. So see you next Sunday. Um, um, it was my pleasure and enjoy very much. And, and next Sunday I will have another subject. And I send you so much blessings and this time including with creativity. And we are going to finish with one of Frida Kahlo's quotes. And it's, Fit, what do I need you for when I have wings to fly? Okay. So that's it. All my love for all of you. Thank you to be here. Bye-bye.